Recently, we ran across an RV pulling their toad, and the toad caught fire. We happened to come along at the right time. We were able to jump out and give them some help, offer them some help. So we grabbed our three fire extinguishers that we had, took off running down to the toad fire, and we were trying to fight the flames with the extinguishers and disconnect the tow arms from the toad. And what we found was, even though they were just cotter pins, the tension of the RV pulling the toad and the tow arms locked in place, we couldn't even pull the cotter pins out. They were so tight on there. Next thing we tried to do was pull the, the hitch pin where the actual tow arms connect to the RV, and it was tight. Somebody yelled to the driver to start rocking the rig back and forth. Once they were able to move the rig back a couple inches, the hitch pin came loose and we pulled the hitch pin out and then told him to just floor it and all of the cables that were attached just popped off and he was able to get the RV free of the toad fire. After the fact, we sat down, we kind of did a hot wash between the two of us and we realized our setup, we have locking pins on everything, are not going to cut it if we happen to have a fire. In fact, let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's our setup. The tow bar is locked to the hitch and imagine our tow arms locked to the front of the toad. Now my thought was in the event of a fire, either the RV or the toad, I could come out and quickly remove my locking pin, pull it off and pull one or the other away. After the fire that we stumbled across, it made me pause and, and look at my entire setup again. So what I realized is I'm not gonna be able to get these off if the fire's on the toad and I'm not gonna be able to get it off if the fire's in the RV. So the fix is to remove the locking pin on travel days. And I know you're asking, why do you lock it in the, in the beginning? Well, I lock it when we were sitting somewhere because I don't wanna remove it every time we stop somewhere. I don't, want, I don't want it to walk off, so that's why I lock it. I replaced it with this and I used a cotter pin to hold it in place. The other thing that I looked at was cotter pin placement. Do I want it on this side? Do I want it on this side? And I'm putting it on the passenger side or the right side of the hitch pin so that if there is a fire in the toad, my first instinct is to run out of the rig down the passenger side to this side so I can pull it. Then we know that we may need to rock it. Stacy can do that, pull this out. These are the two pins that I'm talking about for the toad side. This came with it. This is what I switched to, the locking pin. And the reason I locked both the hitch side and the tow bar side is I've heard and read stories about toads being stolen in the middle of the night because they're already in neutral. All they had to do was come and remove the cotter pin off of the toad side tow bar arms and push the car away and nobody would hear it being taken away. That's why I use these. So I, I'm thinking now that on travel days period, I may just go ahead and put cotter pins all the way around so that I can get them off easier and then when we stop for an overnight somewhere, go ahead and throw my locking pins back in. That way I know that everything's secure overnight. We thought it would be really important to share what we learned with that fire because it really changed the way we think about hitching up our tow car. Yeah, and it's, I mean, not only did it cause me to look at our setup, but now every time I see an RV with a toad on the back, I'm always looking at their hitch setup now just just because it's got my attention and I just don't want something like that to happen to somebody else on the road where they just can't unhook. Yeah. Now, obviously, if the fire is right there and, and you can't get to it in time, well, then you can't. But this gives you something to look at on your own setup if you happen to have any kind of tow arms and a toad attached to your RV. Yeah, definitely food for thought. We would love to hear if you have locking pins on your um, tow arms and how or if you just use the what's it called the cotter pin yeah or if you just use a cotter pin we'd love to hear about that has anybody had trouble removing locking pins from their tow arms please let us know in the comments that way everyone can learn from the information that you share yeah i mean this is just our first crack at it i'm sure um, after the comments there'll be more food for thought and it'll cause me to look at our setup 
differently even more. So we're, we're open. And more importantly, we want to share this with people so that it gets them thinking and get them to look at their setup. Yeah. Now, another thing we've been thinking about is our fire extinguishers. Yeah. So the, sting the extinguishers we have are great and they worked just as advertised, but they don't last very long. Five to 10 seconds, depending on which one you have, is not very long when you're trying to get out of a fire or, you know, beat the fire, fire back long enough to unhitch the car. So um, we are looking at some other ones that will last a bit longer. And if we find anything that we recommend, we will definitely let you know. Yeah, we really liked all the comments that we've got um, on fire extinguishers themselves. Uh, so we're looking at all all angles. You know, uh, we've we've heard everything from get a ten pounder to halon to you name it. Uh, you know, shoot, I will go a triple F from my Navy days. In halon um, from Navy days yeah. too, didn't they? <laughs> uh, but we've got all kinds of ideas that people have used, and we know that. The fire extinguishers that are on board or come with the RVs are inadequate. Yeah, and um, there's usually only one. So yeah. we definitely recommend multiples, no matter how large your RV is. So definitely make sure you have them stacked up in case you need to grab them, even just for the kitchen fire. I felt like the one by the door was really too far away if... If for some reason my paper towels caught on fire while I was cooking dinner, so I wanted something right under the cabinet where I could grab it and take care of it. So just think about that in your space. Yeah, and another thing to think about, if you get one of those foam canisters like we showed um, that we keep under the kitchen sink, they come with shrink wrap around the cap. So you want to go ahead and remove that plastic oh, yeah. shrink wrap around there so you can just pop the cap off and shoot. We've got a ton of comments about our bike rack and the cover on the bikes. People said that they didn't notice our Jeep lights when we were doing our safety checks, our light checks before we get underway. We do have lights so that when the bike cover's on and it, it covers the bikes and the Jeep tail lights, you could still see when I apply the brakes. It was a last minute setup when yeah. I realized, okay, I can't see the Jeep lights. I needed something fast. That's what I put but I am going to change them out for something a little bit better. We never showed you the lights because we didn't really recommend the setup. So when we switch it out, we'll show you that. Yeah. Just a quick reminder as we wrap up this super short video that the ninth is absolutely the last day to enter to win this fabulous, beautiful Today is Someday Schecter guitar. It is valued at over 900 bucks once you throw in that awesome case and you know, it's got this little tuner thing on the side. <laughs> As you can tell, we're not musicians. Actually, maybe it's an amp. I don't know what it is. I, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> um, we don't know much about guitars other than this thing is a work of, of beauty here. Yeah, it's really um, nice. Our friend Eric from Techno RV in last week's video played it for us, and it sounded really, really good. Yeah. Well, he is pretty talented, so that did help. Uh, he is. You know, look. There we go. <laughs> Beautiful. See, that's all I have. All right, so if you would like to win this guitar, I'll put the link down below so you can go find and see all the rules. It includes a donation to Homes for Our Troops, or you can purchase one of our awesome hats, which the last day you can purchase the hats will be tomorrow. So if you wanted a Today and Someday hat, tomorrow's the last day for that as well. So I'll put all the details down below. Yeah, and I got to tell you, the blue leather patch hat I thought would be the top seller. It's not. So, we were both wrong on that. Yeah. I thought it was going to be the black trucker hat that says today is someday on the side. So it's the dad hats. Of course, they're my favorite hat. So <laughs> It's the gray dad hat that's leading the charge. But uh, I got to say that y you have come out. You've answered the call. Um, well, either that or you really want this guitar. Well, it's not just for the hats. We've had so many direct donations to Homes for Our Troops. Oh my gosh, it's just amazing. We are overwhelmed with your generosity. So I know these veterans are just going to so appreciate everything this money is going to do for them. Yeah, and I can tell you, you're hearing it straight from the horse's mouth. No matter what we've accomplished with our YouTube channel over the, the last three years, we really, really you know, one of, we want to make sure that our veterans are taken care of and the amount of money that we've been able to raise in a short amount of time has been well worth it to us. I mean, we absolutely love that you guys are on board with us yeah. and are able to contribute whatever it is. And if you can't and you, you just say, you know what, I love what you're doing, that works for us. Yes, we appreciate that too. And we're, and we're just thrilled to really just remind people what all our veterans have gone through, what they've sacrificed, and of course, those currently on active duty. So we're just trying to let everyone know how much we appreciate them. And I'm sure you guys appreciate them just as much. Yeah.
Now, don't forget, those of you who are receiving all your awesome packages, your t-shirts, your veteran t-shirts, and your hats, make sure you wear them and post it on your social media. Use hashtag Someday Crew. I can't wait to see where you're wearing them, what you're doing, and we just want to say thank you and hello. Yeah, and contrary to popular belief, I do like all the other branches of the service. <laughs> It's all in good fun. It is. We appreciate you guys, and, and we know the hard work you guys do, just like the Navy. Hashtag go Navy. That's right. <laughs> Can't say that enough. You guys are awesome, and we really appreciate all the support with everything that we've done so far. All right. So I know we've been atypical, and we kind of sat on the couch and did a little chatting, but let me tell you, we have some awesome things planned coming up tomorrow right out of the gate. We're going to start doing more adventures. We have something <laughs> scheduled. We're going somewhere. Activities. Woohoo! COVID has really slowed down, obviously slowed everyone down as far as exploring and venturing out a little bit, but things are, are clearing up, and tomorrow we're going to be hitting it hard. Yeah, and I don't even know where we're going, but I'm excited. <laughs> I, I always wait till the last minute to know anyway, so. So expect a lot more adventurous type videos because we are really excited to bring those to you. All right, now, we haven't told you guys in a while, so in case anybody is new on here, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Our Village. Our Village, we have really grown to love. We have almost 9,000 members in our group over there. And the good thing about our group is if somebody asks a question mm -hmm. or posts something in there, normally somebody's quick to get an answer before we get to it. Yeah, we may not even know the answer. If you have a question about a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, there is a wealth of knowledge in that group. People have been RVing way longer than us and have way more knowledge than we do. And what I love about it is, unlike Facebook or Instagram, you can post in our group. You don't just wait for us to post and comment at the bottom. So I'm gonna put the link for our village page down below. It'll take you straight to our group. I would love it if you would join us. Every post gets seen. There's no algorithms. People won't miss what you say. And you know- More importantly- What? Sorry. We met our RV besties out oh, of the yeah. gate through our village. So it, our village really means something to us. Yeah. There is a sense of community there. I just had to jump in and say that because <laughs> it just, it truly is where you, you've probably seen Al and Angie in maybe one or two of our videos. And or the, 10 or 20 or 30. But we just love what our village is about the RV community. We are a very active group on this on this platform and that's because we love our community. We love chatting with you guys. Our village is a free platform. Yep. So come on over, meet some people, hang out with us, post some pictures. We would love to see where you're at and what you're doing. Yeah, and there's other groups within our village that may interest you as well. So you can do a search yeah. for, you know, if you have a Forest River, for example, they have, I think it's called a frog group or something, <laughs> something like, like that, that, a Forest River group. Yeah. There's a Grand Design group. There's uh, a really good tips and tricks group That's the in number there. one group yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's really good. I'm gonna put an affiliate link down below. So click that link, come on over, get to know somebody and meet your RV bestie in our village. Yeah. Thanks for popping over today. <laughs> um, I know this video is a little different than our norm, but stay tuned because next week it's going to be full of fun and adventure. We hope. No, it will be. <laughs> yeah.